Hey mini fans, I'm going to introduce you to something that you may not know about. I'm going to show you how to make one of these battlements for your figures. Let's stick one in there, should give you a bit of a scale. There we go. Yeah, now this stuff is made from EVA. Okay, so the high density foam. Now, my cosplay community will know all about this stuff, is what we make. Stuff like that. Oh, well. But anyway, that aside, I've seen people use foam board, uh, but this is thick, it's lightweight, it's not going to break, and it's good for making battle damage on as well with a real easy trick. Okay, so forgive my cosplay people, but in the miniature community, you might not know about this stuff. Okay, so it it sticks with super glue as well. Okay. You know, well that stuff is cuts with hobby knives, craft knives. Um, obviously be careful using them. Uh, and uh, I'm now going to show you how to make one of these. So the first thing you need to do is to mark out how big you want your battlement to be or whatever you're making. Now this is not going to be an exact copy of this. this. isn't The first one was not a before and after. I didn't film it in reverse. So I'm going to make something similar to this um, just to show you how easy it is. Okay. So there's your template. I've used a chalk pen. Um, try not to use black permanent marker on this stuff because if you're using a lighter colour, the, the permanent marker can bleed through. So you'll use a white pen. Okay, right, back in a moment. So here we have the main body of the barricade cut out. Now I could leave it like that because it will stand up by itself, but obviously playing could knock it over. This was just cut out with using one of these retractable craft knives. Remember to put it away and do, if you're cutting a lot of this stuff out, it will dull the blade quite badly. Okay, so always use a sharp blade and be careful using that. Now it's time to stick all the extra bits on so it actually stands up without falling over, okay? And then we'll now do that. So I'm gonna stick this on with super glue. And there it is. All blended in nicely. So if your knife, if your knife is nice and sharp, it will go through this like a hot knife through butter. Don't worry about these little fluffy bits. We'll get rid of them in a minute. Now you could leave it like that. You want it looking nice and pristine? Paint it up with acrylic paint. You know, like the normal stuff we use on our miniatures. Or you can make it more battle damaged. It's up to you. But now I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect. And it's basically, quite simply, this. Okay. And all we do is cut in, excuse the hands, cut in to chop little chunks out. And then to create these lines, we just slice into the foam, not all the way through it. Otherwise it's gonna fall apart, isn't it? So just, a third of the way in, okay? And then I'll show you how to make them wider. So I'll be back in a moment with that. Bing! There we go. That didn't take very long. Obviously super glue is pretty quick, but the more astute among you would have noticed that the center support, you know, focus. the center support is slightly smaller than the main part of the barrier. So what I'm gonna do now is trim that back so it matches the height like this one does, so it all blends in, okay? So we're gonna do that now, just with hobby knife, just slice down the sides there, either side, and take that piece out. So we've taken our knife out to our barrier and chopped it up a bit, don't forget the back. Um, some nice choppy choppy bits at the top, and we've put like the little line in bolt cracks a third of the way in with our craft knife being extremely careful, especially if your kids are watching, get some adult supervision. Bullet holes like this one here and here are just uh, created by just twisting the tip of the blade in or you could use your sprue cutters or some long nose pliers just to pinch into the foam and pull it out. But the cracks on this one don't look anything like this one, do they? No. And here's why not. Because what we need to do now 
is to use oh, one of these, a heat gun, to heat the foam up. And what that will do then will expand the cuts that we've made in the surface of the foam to make them look more like that. Okay, and once it cools down, which takes seconds, they will stay like that, okay? So I will now prove this, trying to do this one-handed whilst holding the camera and the heat gun at the same time. Okay, so I think I've put the torch on for this one because the light's not that great. So I'll be back in a moment with some better illumination. Wow, that is much better. <laughs> right, we're going to turn Ralph on, my ever-friendly heat gun. It's going to get noisy now. I know you won't be able to hear me, but you'll see what, how the magic happens. Now, you don't want it too close, or you're going to melt the foam, and that's bad. And the fumes aren't good for you. So always have a mask on, well-ventilated area, obviously. And don't touch the end of the heat gun on the foam. Okay, so here we go. Voila! Now it's looking a bit more better, a bit more spread out, so it's still a bit bendy because I've heated it up, but it will cool down and return more to its solid state like this. So we'll just let it cool down. And obviously, I'll do the back in a second. Now this treatment also helps seal the foam, so when you come to paint it, the surface is less porous and your paint will not get sucked into the foam, okay? So now it's looking a bit more battle damage. Now, the next stage I'm going to show you is how to recreate uh, a big open wound to show that the metal, the metal supports inside, which are just Q-tip bits, you know, the old air pokers that you shouldn't put in your ears apparently. But we're just going to snip the middle bit out and use that as imitation steel bar. Okay. Right. Let's back show you this. Here's the two pieces, and now I'm going to show you how to recreate this part and that part, the hole with the reinforcing. I'm going to chop the end of this off. So I've already got that nice crack there, uh, and then very carefully, we're going to go in and make this kind of cut. Now I haven't gone all the way through yet. Because I'm not going to go all the way through because we want some of the backing to remain behind it. So I'm just going to slice in about halfway, flip it up, and then cut into the foam this way. There's the nice thud, prove it we're nearly through. Now, because we're doing battle damage, it doesn't actually matter if it looks a bit dodgy. It all adds the aesthetic. So there's one piece out. Now to create a hole, uh, we'll then do the same kind of thing up here. And slice in that way because it's a bit easier. Just gentle pressure and out it pops. Well, let's put an extra bit of a crack on there. Just why not, eh? Oop. Pull that out. There we have a nice hole. Now then. Too bad. I think I'm going to just take a bit more of this off. Oh, get it in shot. Put it on the angle. 
because uh, the good thing about this stuff is it's not like the foam board where it's just foam noodle and card on the outside this is the same stuff all the way through so you can build up layers with it very easy and quickly plop that back, back on there so there we've got a hole kind of uh, and now we just need need a q-tip which like all good professionals I didn't get one out oh. We'll go with my beautification drawer and pop one out. Oh. Right then, where's my skitters? Oh, that's the chair, not me. So here we have the old cotton bud. So we don't need the cottony bit, so we just chop them off. Um, these are actually papery card ones. You can get get plastic ones. Or maybe not these days, you know. Um, there we go. Uh, the good thing about this foam is you can uh, pretty much push it in if you wanted to. But to make it easy for ourselves, I think I did that off camera. Where's my exacto knife? There it is, hiding under my ruler. So, I've got a, a very nice spiky blade on here. I'm gonna very carefully just wiggle that, twist it into the foam to make a little hole. And I do mean very gently. Then we get our Q-tip and we just Bend it really badly. Pop that into the hole, okay. There we go. Now we are going to super glue this into place. Um, so it won't come out. So I'll get some super glue. Super glue. Bosh a bit under there. Ooh, a bit too much. Get the job done. And then uh, we'll hold that down till it sets. And um, and then we'll cut it. We'll cut the end off. That's nearly dry, so we'll cut the ends off. Snip. We're in the cleaner. We'll get that later. <laughs> I wish. Uh, we'll just fit that on and see what that's looking like. Good, good, good. Now, because this is all foam. And that's card. It's going to be children safe. Now, just to add a bit more damage, what I do is I'm going to just bend the end up a little bit so it's sticking out like so. And then when we come and stick that back in, it all adds to the effect. Let's round that off a little bit. Now, more super glue, uh, and then we'll reattach the bottom bit in. Should I get the right the right way round and just plonk it back in the hole? Voila, there we go. That taken me a minute. It's probably taken me longer to make film it. Um than for you to actually make one. Uh, there we go. Wasn't too difficult. So that's an introduction to using EVA foam to um, make anything for your battle table really. Simple as that. Um, I'll be back later with some painting. Whoop whoop. Painting time now and I've already hit these up with a quick coat of just normal cheap and cheerful black acrylic. Okay, nothing spectacular. We're not breaking the bank here. Any old cheapo acrylic will do. So that's dried and now I've, got, I've mixed some black and white together to make a kind of mid-tone grey. And then we're going to dry brush this. The first stage of dry brushing. Get that one out of the way. Um, before we add the highlight. Um, 
So let's get cracking. So I'm just going to do some circular mo motions, movements, whatever you want to call it. Try to keep away from the bottom. This is the bottom. And then you're already creating a darker tone at the bottom of the uh, battlement, as well as in the joints there. But if you're dry brushing, it should do that anyway. Uh, it's up to you, you can paint all grey. I'm going to flick it on, and can stipple it on. Any old out, just to build up that concrete look. Or uh, whatever they have for concrete in the future. Stabby, stabby, stabby. Just with the high, the dry brushing with this, we're starting to get some nice tone into it. And it's starting to look reasonably decent. That's my opinion. You might have a different one. I hope you agree with me. If you do, you know where to comment. Now, this is where some hobbyists would go in. You can help me out with my Patreon account, but I don't have one of those. If you think I should, drop in a comment. I'll make some more of this then. Some more quality content for you. Or not. But yeah, I have no funding at the moment. You never know. If you look like this. I might do. So as it's a it is 3D, you've got to remember to get around all the edges. Try to leave the cracks free of paint. I mean, you can always go back in there with that, that kind of wash, touch them up later. So it's not not the end of the world if you get paint in there. Dabby dabby dabby. Get the back. Slap it on. I say it's up to you how much you want to go in with the detail on this. Or how back you might not want them back one, you might want them looking pristine. Pristine. I'd also have some nice, usually have some nice tunes on while I'm listening to this. While I'm listening to this, while I'm painting this, but I don't want to break any copyright. Mm. Right, so I've got 15% left on my battery. Groovy. So there we go. That's what before and after. Uh, and then. I'll do this one off camera and then we'll do the high the high highlighting. The little final highlight. I'll be back for that. Okay? Because you you guys and girls know how to do this. Here's the two pieces and now I'm going to show you how to recreate this part and that part, the hole with the reinforcing, I'm going to chop the end of this off. So I've already got that nice crack there uh, and then very carefully we're going to go in and make this kind of cut. Now I haven't gone all the way through yet because I'm not going to go all the way through because we want some of the backing to remain behind it. So I'm just going to slice in about halfway, flip it up and then cut into the foam this way. The nice thud, through but we're nearly through. That's a little bit more off. Now because we're doing battle damage, it doesn't actually matter if it looks a bit dodgy. But 
oil adds the aesthetic. So there's one piece out. Now to create a hole, uh, we'll then do the same kind of thing up here. And slice in that way because it's a bit easier. Just gentle pressure and out it pops. Take it out. Let's put an extra bit of a crack on there. Just why not, eh? Oop. Pull that out. There we have a nice hole. Now then. Too bad. I think I'm going to just take a bit more of this off. Oh, get it in shot. Put it on the angle. Because uh, the good thing about this stuff is it's not like the foam board where it's just foam noodle and card on the outside. This is the same stuff all the way through. So you can build up layers with it very easy and quickly. So there we've got a hole, kind of, uh, and now we just need need a Q-tip, which, like all good professionals, I didn't get one out. Oh. We'll go with my beautification drawer oh. and pop one out. Where's my skitters? Oh, that's the chair, not me. So here we have the old cotton bud. So we don't need the cottony bit, so we just chop them off. Um, these are actually papery card ones. You can get get plastic ones. Or maybe not these days, who knows? Um, there we go. Uh, the good thing about this foam is you can uh, pretty much push it in if you wanted to. But to make it easy for ourselves, I think I did that off camera. Where's my exacto knife? There it is, hiding under my roller. So I've got a, a very nice spiky blade on here. I'm going to very carefully wiggle that, twist it into the foam to make a little hole. And I do mean very gently. Then we get our Q-tip and we just bend it really badly. Pop that into the hole, okay. There we go. Now we are gonna super glue this into place. Um, so it won't come out. So I'll get some super glue. Bosh a bit under there, ooh, a bit too much. Get the job done. And then uh, we'll hold that down till it sets. And, um, and then we'll cut, it, we'll cut the end off. So now that gray coat has dried, using the same gray mixture I've added a decent amount of a colour called Buff Titanium. So instead of adding white to make it too stark, it gives it a more of a warmer earth tone, if, that, if you can understand what I mean. So more of a wet cement look, which is what kind of want for concrete. If you just wipe, dry brush white onto it, it might be a bit stark, should we say. So let's get that one out of the way. Uh, and now for this colour, we're really uh, just picking out the main highlights, all the edges and the top, tops of things where the light would catch. Simple as that. So if that was white, that would look a bit. That would look a lot brighter. Um, I'm not going to put any white on, just to prove that point. But believe me. Pop 
pop all this on. Uh, we're going to do a couple more effects after this because I'm going to put maybe some burn marks around the bullet holes there. But again, just, just lightly brush onto the tops of the damage. Um, and then you get your lovely create highlight. But I like this above titanium. It's much better than white. But it's your choice. If you haven't got that, you can probably mix white into a light brown and get the same effect. Because uh, that's that's what it looks like. Buff titanium. And see, as I said before, these are not expensive paints I'm using here. I mean, you don't you don't really want to be doing that if you're building lots of if you're doing big structures. It cheap and cheerful, save your pennies. Get it, get it in the shop. I do like dry brushing, something therapeutic about it, especially if I had some music on. You guys, I'm sure you guys have music on when you're painting. Or an audio book, anything. Do we think it's looking concrete here? Early bits in. Oh, hair! How how dare you? I think we're getting there. Let's crack on down this end, because obviously we've got to paint the steel bar in a bit. Well, that's not going to. Be too difficult. And we'll get some lighter on these bits just when we darken them up for the battle damage. It'll make it stand out more, make it more prominent. That'll be a better bit of English. And don't forget the back. We don't want the back left out. I'm feeling upset. Back's just as important as the front. Plus, it stops your barrier falling over. Stipple, stipple, stipple. Do a before and after. You can see the difference now. How it highlights up and makes it a bit more concretey, stone, whatever you want to call it. All right, I'm going to do the one off camera and then we'll come back, and paint this bad boy, and do some finishing touches. Top highlights finished. I've now got some Vallejo Gunmetal Grey to do the. Uh, the, the Rima bar, the metal bar, so let's get a bit on my brush. And uh, I'll dab it on. Concentrating then, hence I start talking. <laughs> so, shiny metal will dull that down in a bit. Let's do this one now. You didn't see them, but there's a bit there. Oh, missed. There's a bit there. You can't see. But I know it's there. So, if you know it's there, then you can see it. You gotta paint it. Oh, am I going to get that little brush in there, mate? Not yet. Do these two. Now, because it's dark in there anyway, you only have to really get the main highlight of the pipe. Or the bar, shall we say. 
to create the effect. Lovely. Let's get a smaller brush. Get in that little hole. Deep breath. Put away with it. Um, oh, poorly foot. Back in there and this little brush again, I'll just dab on that, take that out of the equation. Lovely. Now, oh, nearly what? Nearly clean like me tea then. Now I've got some, what we've got? Some burnt umber, again, a clip. I'm just going to dry brush this in and around the bullet hole areas. Might work, might not. Yeah, yeah, let's give it a go. Just little circles. It's like a scorch mark. Wow, that's subtle. Maybe not rub the brush side next time. There we go. Dab, dab a bit in there. Bit of rusty pipe action. Nearly worked. Load the brush up again. Test my finger, yep. Well, I don't have my music on, but I've got the lovely sound of some rainfall because it is now chucking it down outside. Colour, just tidy that up where I've hit it. And there we go, all done. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. You know, maybe follow me, maybe slap some more top hints like this. But this costs next to nothing. If you're buying the foam, HD foam is what you need because that's nice and solid. It's not as bendy as the the, uh, the cheap floor mat stuff. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Happy painting.